on behalf of the General Assembly. I thank His Excellency for his statement. The Assembly will now hear a statement by His Excellency Charlotte Salwai Tabi Masmas, Prime Minister of the Republic of Vanuatu. I welcome His Excellency Charlotte Salwai Tabi Masmas, Prime Minister of the Republic of Vanuatu, and I invite him to address the General Assembly. Excellency, you have the floor. Madam La Presidente. Madam President, it's an honor for Vanuatu to join other speakers in congratulating you on assuming the presidency of the 73rd session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. We wish to assure you of our full support. I would also like to express my gratitude to your predecessor, His Excellency Miroslav Lachek, for his excellent leadership. Allow me also to salute the Secretary General Guterres and reiterate the trust of my government in his leadership. Madam President, I would like to pay tribute to His Excellency Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations, who left us last month. Mr. Annan will long be remembered for his defense of UN reform and his determination to resolve major issues in a peaceful manner through his faith in mediation and dialogue. Madam President, the United Nations was founded with the vision that nations can come together to play the important role of prevention in, in order to save future generations from the scourge of war and to reestablish faith in fundamental human rights. The founders also had a vision of an organization that would serve as a pillar of the world order where international peace and security would be guaranteed by international law. They also envisaged international mechanisms to improve social progress and living standards for humanity. This week will offer an opportunity to assess the progress made over the past seven decades and address the sectors where more progress is necessary. The theme of the 73rd century, making the session, making the UN relevant to all people, global leadership and shared responsibilities for peaceful, equitable, and sustainable societies. This theme is more relevant than ever as we debate how to build a United Nations that is more strong, more just, and more transparent, one that is fit for purpose. The United Nations has made major progress in recent decades. Extreme poverty has been reduced by half. More girls are in school than ever. More women, particularly in rural areas, are playing a more active role in contributing to the global economy, economy. And even the health of mothers and children has improved considerably. However, these progress uh, and achievements are sometimes overshadowed by the shortcomings of the United Nations, in particular its recurrent inability to address the increasing list of problems facing humanity, including the inability of the Security Council to take decisive action on Syria, among other examples. The government of Vanuatu joins other governments in recalling that being a member of the Security Council is not only a privilege, it also requires demonstrating leadership, determination, and shared responsibility in order to preserve global peace and security. My government welcomes the reforms being undertaken by Secretary General Guterres, which focus on prevention and peacekeeping and making the organization more coherent and effective thanks to a comprehensive approach. We, may, we welcome efforts to reform the UN development system, which requires targeted changes within the system itself in order to attain the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. And my government calls for the UN system to be flexible and to 
provide for the possibility to revise and, advan uh, and adapt to the configuration, role, and development services of multi-country offices of the United Nations in order to ensure the implementation of the SDGs. In the context of the current UN reform agenda, I wish to draw attention to the human rights pillar Without an efficient, resilient national UN human rights system in each country, it will be difficult to use preventative diplomacy. UN reform must address the entirety of the system by aligning peace and security more closely with the pillars of development and human rights. Madam President, the Pacific region has committed to urgently strengthening its climate resilience in order to create a strong region. This is the outcome of the Leaders' Summit of the Pacific Islands Forum held at the beginning of the month in Nauru. Nature continues to warn us of imminent dangers to the planet, which is coming to a point of non-return beyond which our climate systems will no longer be able to adapt. Heat waves during the summer, immense foreign fires, extreme drought, and the increasing frequency and scope of weather phenomena have made the debate on climate change more important than ever. And I sincerely hope that these warnings will lead to concerted climate action. As the country most at risk in the world in terms of exposure to natural threats, according to the World Risk Report of the United Nations University, Climate change remains one of the ma major threats for us in terms of achieving our national 2030 agenda objectives. And it's currently the phenomenon that is putting uh, tens of thousands of lives at risk in our country. If greenhouse gas emissions remain at their present uh, level and rate of increase, uh, we're going to see an increase in the cost related to climate change, costs that vulnerable countries such as mine cannot afford, this will cost us dearly in the future if we don't take action now. Madam President, developed countries have committed to mobilize $100 billion annually for climate action in developing countries by 2020. However, how this will be achieved remains unclear. We call for prioritizing these commitments and the adoption of a specific roadmap that would lead to the expeditious collection and mobilization of these funds because climate change will not wait. We also call for a more flexible access to climate funding through the simplification of approval procedures that will allow vulnerable countries to implement the measures they have adopted to face climate change. The Pacific region cannot afford to see the Paris Climate Agreement relegated to the archives of the UN. We therefore urge for the program of work of the Paris Agreement to be completed and made operational in Katowice. Climate change threatens the sustainability of the environment. It threatens sustainable development, basic rights, both in the present and in the future. It represents a real danger for the survival of future generations and for low-lying countries, particularly in the Pacific. The commitments made to date through national determined contributions are simply not enough to reverse the trend of climate change. Parties to the Paris Agreement must step up their determination to achieve the target of 1.5 degrees as agreed. For con countries that are vulnerable, particularly in our region, failing to do this would mean being exported to even more disasters of even greater scale more frequently. Madam President, Pacific Islands, as the largest oceanic continent in the world, are an essential source of food and income for our populations. It is therefore important to apply sustainable policies for the sound management and conservation of the oceans that will allow us to ensure a future for our people. We welcome any proposals to support our regional efforts to protect our oceans. Vanuatu, like other countries, has unresolved issues relating to its maritime borders, and this is an important step in completing our independence process. We are determined to addressing these issues. We are encouraged by a decision made by 
leaders of the Pacific, under the auspices of the Pacific Islands Forum, to move ahead with negotiations with a view to concluding them and presenting a report in 2019. My country welcomes the mobilization of mechanisms within the Pacific Island Forum to establish a new agreement on the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity beyond areas of national jurisdiction, which is an important opportunity for the Pacific. Madam President, Vanuatu retains its position on denuclearization. Pacific Island states, and in particular our brothers and sisters in the states of Micronesia, continue to face ongoing threats stemming from radioactive contamination, relics from the Second World War, and unexploded ordinances. We therefore call on member states to join us in ratifying the United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Madam President, since the establishment of the United Nations, some 750 million people from more than 80 former colonies have achieved political independence. However, the situation of millions of others aspiring to self-determination remains desperate. Vanuatu places a crucial importance on the work of the Special Decolonization Committee. The elimination of all forms of colonialism must remain a top priority on the United Nations agenda in the spirit of the United Nations Charter. New Caledonia is in the process of determining its destiny through a referendum which will take place on November 4th, 2018. We call on the international community to support the right of the people of New Caledonia to participate fully in this referendum and above all to ensure that it takes place in a free and fair manner. Madam President, the international community has witnessed violence and violations of human rights that have been suffered by the people of West Papua. We call on the Human Rights Council to investigate these human rights abuses. We also call on our fellow leaders of the world to pay greater attention, attention to these inhuman acts and, together with Indonesia, to put an end to all forms of violence and find common ground with the populations to establish a process that will allow them to freely express their choice. According to the principles of the Charter of the United Nations, we all have an obligation to work together to lift the economic, trade, and financial embargo imposed on the Republic of Cuba. Lifting these sanctions will, among other things, allow the Cuban people to enjoy their human rights. Madam President, a key priority of my country is ensuring national sustainable development for our population by 2030 and seeks to leave no one behind. Our national sustainable development goals are focused on the population and they are flexible and indivi indivisible so that a balance can be achieved between the three dimensions of sustainable development. We are aware that the eradication of poverty in all its forms and dimensions is an essential precondition to sustainable development. However, my government cannot shoulder the immense responsibility of achieving sustainable development for our country alone. This is a task that is made even more difficult by the fact that we're exposed to natural disasters of increasing intensity. Recently, my government had to evacuate some 11,000 people from Ambe Island due to increased volcanic activity, something that is a major financial challenge in the context of an already limited national budget. In this regard, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our development partners who helped the government and people of Vanuatu in this difficult time and who continue to finance measures to improve living standards for our populations. Madam President, my government welcomes the opportunity that will be provided to us to present our voluntary national review in 2019. We count on the support and comments of delegations when we share our progress, our gaps, and our challenges. In order to implement Vanuatu's National Sustainable Development Plan, it is essential to establish strong, lasting partnerships in all sectors and with multiple stakeholders. Madam President, Vanuatu will graduate from its least developed country status by December 2020. We hope that we can continue to count on our development partners to support us with measures that will allow us to achieve developed country status as quickly as possible. And by way of conclusion, Madam President, I would like to reaffirm that Vanuatu 
has faith and has trust in multilateralism. The United Nations have made the world a better place compared to what it was 70 years ago. A large number of strides forward has been made since its establishment. This is true, but much work remains ahead of us if we wish to preserve the relevance of the United Nations. Global problems require appropriate solutions. We must find ways to work collectively and inclusively to resolve these global problems. And we must continually strive to reform this organization in order to make it more efficient so that it can meet our expectations both today and in the years to come. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the Republic of Vanuatu for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.